Hi there and welcome to another Singing Teacher Reacts video. My name is Peter Vox and I am the Director and Principal Teacher of Vox Singing Academy and I have been since 1993. Before I get stuck into this, if we could help you or someone that you know with their singing, we'd be absolutely honored. Please check out the links below for more info. We give private singing lessons and online singing lessons worldwide seven days a week. And that's what we do best and that's what we pride ourselves on is result-driven singing lessons. Now, this isn't really going to be a react video. It's gonna be more of a discussion. And the discussion will be about Katy Perry's performance at the 2024 AFL Grand Final, whether it was a hit or whether it was a miss. Now, for those of you who don't know what the AFL Grand Final is, it's the equivalent to the um, American Super Bowl or the Premier League Grand Final. Now, Katy Perry performed a seven song set uh, for an estimated $5 million that went for 18 minutes. Now, I will discuss the length. Let's go into the length now. First and foremost, I think it was too long. I know that when Kiss performed, um, they performed for, I think, 13 minutes. And I know that when Usher performed for the 2024 American Super Bowl, that also went for 13 minutes. So I think 18 minutes, personally, myself, was, was uh, was too long. Now, the set consisted of uh, some helicopter animation um, to start with, <clears throat> pardon me, which were these silver animated helicopters that had some banners. Um, and then the first song that Katie started with was, was Raw. Great song. Loved it. She came out on the top of... Uh, like a space age automobile. It was basically just a car with a silver blanket going over the top of it with two fans sticking out the back. Um, personally, I think it looked cheesy. It reminded me of when Angry Anderson performed or came out on the Batmobile way back in 1991. Now, this isn't 1991 anymore, and I thought we could have had something a little bit better than her on the top of a car singing raw. Now, I love... I love the song. I think it's an absolute banger, and I think it was great to open up the set, gets people uh, fired up and pumped up. So I thought that that was uh, a great, a really great choice. The second song was Dark Horse, which is a great song. Um, then she went on to the stage. Uh, it was a very minimalistic stage. It was basically a round circle stage in the middle that had two round walkways that went onto the stage. Again, very minimalistic, nothing on stage, it looked like it was just covered in tin foil. So I'm glad that it wasn't um, thunderstorms because who knows what would have had to happen to Katy Perry's hair then um, if she got struck by lightning. God forbid that that would ever happen. It was a beautiful day, actually. So we, again, the last couple of grand finals have been fantastic where the Melbourne's really turning on. It's absolutely awful here today. It's been raining, cold. Um, and typical Melbourne weather, um, four seasons in one day. <clears throat> Katie um, looked fantastic. Um, I, like, I really liked her outfit. She had this sort of like Roman chest plate come over the top here, and she looked fantastic. She was joined on stage by male dancers that were dressed in purple, uh, reminded me of the Oompa Loompas from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. But that's just my opinion. They were relatively uh, entertaining, uh, sort of took the, the focus away from Katy Perry a little. Then uh, again with Dark Horse, and around this time, I can't remember because I've only watched it once and uh, I'm not going to watch it again. There were some computer animations that came in. There were some like arms, some cranes, that were holding these type of ball type of things, um, which were great. And I actually think this they kicked in around, I think, Gorgeous and uh, Lifetimes. And these are two singles off the new Katy Perry album. I don't, I think she could have picked other songs to put in there instead of these songs, particularly Lifetimes. Gorgeous, I think, is a really good song, but I think she could have replaced another big hit 
uh, for lifetimes, but I think she wanted to promote the two singles off the new album uh, that I don't think really cut the mustard for this particular performance. Um, the computer animations were fantastic. They were distracting and they were great for the viewer on watching it from uh, the television, which I was. So I think without these computer animations and watching it from the crowd, I think it would have been quite boring to be to be honest with you. And if anyone was at the um, at the performance, please let me know what you think. But I would like you to watch anyone that's at the performance before you comment. Watch the replay um, on YouTube of the performance with the computer animations. I thought that they were fantastic how they're coming out of the ground and things like that. But I'd like to know your opinion uh, about what you think of the performance and the sound of the, the, the quality of the, the performance uh, as well too. So it'd be great to hear uh, your comments. Now, after Lifetimes, she went into California Girls, which was, which was good. And then she went into I Kissed a Girl with Tina Arena. Now, Tina Arena um, was really big in the 90s with a hit called Chains, which I'm going to talk about in a second. She hasn't really done a lot. She's been based in France and has released a lot of uh, French albums and albums over there because she's bigger over there than what she is here, surprisingly. Um, and it was great to see Tina Arena perform. Um, she probably wasn't in the... Uh, well, she didn't look that flattering in what she was wearing. Um, but again, that's just just, just my opinion. Uh, she, they sung just a, a verse and a chorus of I Kissed a Girl with Tina Arena. And then they went into Chains by Tina Arena. Again, it was just a verse and a chorus, which I think was great. It was a great song. I love the song. I don't think it, again, suited. We want up-tempo songs. When I'm... I think the crowd and and the viewers, they want to get hyped for the game and it kind of sort of brought it down a little bit then. <clears throat> the finale, fireworks, phenomenal, banger, love the song, absolutely great, great song to finish with as well too, pumps the crowd up. So I thought that that was really great. So personally myself, I think the set started and finished well, but slowed down in the middle. That's just me. I know there was dances, distractions, things like that. I just think that you need to keep it with up-tempo bangers and hits so the viewers and the crowd get vibed and they get hyped. Now, just reacting, <clears throat> pardon me, really bad hay fever. Just reacting to Katy Perry and Tina Arena's performance. Now, I said, I've only watched it once and I watched it live on my TV and it looked like they were both miming, personally, the whole thing. Besides when Katy Perry was yelling at the crowd a couple of times at the start and the finish, um, and I think she did a little ad-lib bit in the middle somewhere where she didn't sing. So there was a bit where she didn't sing. Uh, but I'm sure that it was you know, rehearsed well. I know that it was rehearsed because I, I know that the football teams couldn't um, train on the ground on the Thursday beforehand because Katy Perry was rehearsing. I thought that they maybe could have moved the stage into uh, and somewhere else, maybe Rod Laver Arena, she could have rehearsed there and the football players could have uh, trained on the ground. That's just my opinion. Um, but obviously the AFL had their priorities and they wanted Katy Perry to rehearse on the ground there. I like to know the coach's opinion about about um, that as well too, uh, both coaches' opinions. Okay, so back to this discussion here. Let's just go to the 2024 American Super Bowl. Now I'm going to put the American Super Bowl in the links here. It was 14 minutes. It was headlined by Usher. He was joined on stage by Alicia Keys, Will Am I, Little John, Post Malone, Her, Andrea Day, plus about seven other performers. It was an amazing performance. There were uh, entertainers on stage um, with feathers and he had the glove on like Michael Jackson and there were people on roller skates and it was just crazy. Everything that was happening, it was like sensory overload. It was an amazing performance. Was it too long? Hit where it hurts. Absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> Pardon me again. Sorry about my hay fever here. 
I have got some links to people that suffer for hay fever as well too in, uh, in my tutorials on YouTube. So check that, those out if you suffer from hay fever. I thought the performance was absolutely phenomenal um, for that uh, American Super Bowl performance. I thought it was absolutely great. Check out the links below. Let me know what, what you think. Now, I know the AFL haven't got a massive budget like that, but, geez, I think we can do something better than what we dished up there um, yesterday. Personally, I think that we should have only Australian artists performing at the AFL Grand Final. I think Cole Chisel, ACDC, Kylie Minogue, Guy Sebastian, these type of acts would have been absolutely fantastic. And a lot of these people are performing currently and touring currently now. Because I know that the AFL, it looks like they pick international artists that are currently touring at the time to perform at the AFL Grand Final. I think that we should have four or three of the biggest Australian performers do two songs each, their biggest hits, just hit it where it hurts, 15 minutes, that's it, bang, bang, bang. Personally for me, this was a miss. I thought that Kiss and Robbie Williams were a lot more entertaining, particularly Robbie Williams. I think he killed it, he slayed it. Um, his song set was amazing. It was very entertaining. Delta was fantastic. I just thought that this looked very minimalistic and looked cheesy. And besides the first and last songs, um, I was frankly a little bit bored. And the only thing that kept me entertained was the dancers and the big balloons that they had and the animations. And that's watching it from my home television. And I think it would have been maybe even a little bit, uh, maybe more boring if you were actually at the ground. Uh, because we had the animations, we had the different camera angles, top, bottom, the, the camera angles were phenomenal. Um, it was really great. So I think the production of it was, was really, really good. But again, that's just my personal opinion. I thought Katy Perry sung very, very well because I think that she was miming most of the time, so it was pitch perfect. And I don't think the AFL will ever let anyone sing live again after the meatloaf performance. I'll put the meatloaf performance in the in the description as well too. And uh, I don't. I think that they will just. They're not going to take that chance ever again to have a, a performance that was quite bad. I'll put the links in to Robbie Williams, to Kiss, to the uh, 2024 Super Bowl and Katy Perry. Uh, let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you think differently, let me know. Uh, let me know what you thought about it, particularly watching it from home. But I'd like to know what it was like from the actual ground as well too. So these are just my personal opinion. This is just my personal opinion. Um, and that's all I've got. I hope that you enjoy this. If you do, give it a like, thumbs up. Comment, please comment, keep it, keep it kind, keep it polite. And uh, until the next React video, peace and much love, be good to each other and enjoy your singing. Bye for now.